We did two tap blocks today. My anesthesiologist did one side, I did the other on. Both were under a minute. I mean, you just can't get any better than that. Even my fellows, we, they've never done ultrasound. I show them how to do a pec block. In two minutes, they're doing it. So this is something that everybody can do. My name is Dr. Mark Salzman. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon. I've been in private practice in Louisville, Kentucky since 1992. Since about 1994, I've been primarily doing aesthetic, uh, cosmetic plastic surgery, uh, non-insurance based, so uh, breast, body, and face. I've uh, been using ultrasound in some form or another since 2012. The handheld ultrasound has changed plastic surgery immensely because the system that I used was $41,000. It's prohibitively expensive. Um, there wasn't any real way to recuperate your costs. I, I wasn't taking insurance, so I couldn't bill an insurance company for it. So it, properly, it was probably a bad decision to buy the thing, but I thought it was so novel and so it had such promise, which turned out to be true. But when the handheld devices came out, now you're talking four, five, six thousand when they first came out, down to three, four thousand dollars today, and now it's easily accessible to every plastic surgeon because there's not this huge expenditure that you have to worry about. I don't know how you practice without this thing. I mean, a patient comes in with 10, 12 year old implants. They look fine, feel fine, grade one capsule. And you know there's at least a 10, 15% chance they're broken. You gotta wait for an MRI. She may or may not come back to you. I whip out this little ultrasound device and in five minutes, I can tell her whether they're broken or not broken. You know, there's no other way to do that other than sending the patient away. If I have a seroma after um, anything to do with abdominal surgery, is it a hematoma? Is it a seroma? I drain it myself. I can very confidently not use drains knowing that should there be a small collection, in three minutes, I can put under ultrasound a small cannula and aspirate the fluid. And, and the patient goes, wow, I don't need to go anywhere. For that, I don't know how you do a, a, a practice like mine without it. And we're also doing blocks. So I just did two tummy tucks today and a breast case. So the two tummy tucks had tap blocks. The breast case had a, what I call a lap block or a lateral approach pectoralis block. And the patients are so appreciative because they, they're out of here an hour and a half for a tummy tuck. They used to stay for four hours in our recovery room because they were in pain. An hour and a half, they're out of here. For a breast case, they're out of here in 15 minutes. So it has revolutionized pain control in being able to do these blocks. And when we first started, you know, there was a learning curve. I can remember doing blocks with our old ultrasound device because it was a linear probe. It was very hard to push down on a heavier patient. With this little handheld probe, we can do a tap block now in under a minute. I mean, it's crazy how easy it is. I like the fact that it's all one device without a battery that that has to come out. So as soon as we're done, we put it back on the wireless charger. We don't have to worry about having a second batter or anything like that. It is so much lighter, and I'm a little guy with a little hand. This one is like holding your iPhone. It's so small and light. And so it, it's just better and better because of the form factor being more and more ergonomic. Yeah, I think it's way better than the traditional probe. It's easier to manipulate than the T-shaped probe, for me anyway. This thing, it, it's just so easy to manipulate back and forth forward and back and it fits in my hand better and I can actually reach the action buttons that are on the front. Yeah, the wireless device is way better if you use it intraoperatively. It's so much easier to put it in a, a sterile type condom for doing BBL or any type of targeted fat grafting that we do a lot of than having that cable that's going draped all over the bed and then you're in a fixed position where whatever your uh, point of contact is what, what, you're, what you're looking at, whether it's an iPad or an iPhone uh, or your computer. In the case of my other one, you got to wheel the computer around in a cart. This thing, the iPad, we have it just on a little stand so I can look left, I can look right. It's so much easier being wireless. You don't have to worry about the length of the wire too. I, I tried to use <clears throat> some of your competitors' devices and the wire is just too damn short. It's hard to get it to where the whatever you're looking at, whether it's an iPad or an iPhone, is in the right spot all the time. So there's a lot of moving it around, which you just don't need to do when it's wireless. You've eliminated all of the, the knobology that ever existed. I think anyone who has ever used an iPhone or an iPad will intuitively know how to use this. I mean, you only swipe 
in, in one direction to change the depth. You swipe in, a, in, in 180 degrees to change the, the brightness or the gain. They don't even have to know what that is gain. Make it brighter. And then everybody knows how to pinch and zoom. And the rest are all iPad commands or iPhone commands that everybody knows how to use. You don't have to know anything about the physics of ultrasound to use this thing. Nowhere does a number need to be specified. I need this to be 11 megahertz. No one else needs to know that. It's very rare that I don't use the center button and leave it on uh, automatic gain. And I just you know move the whole gain back and forth and, and let everything do it itself. Let the AI take over. And as long as what I'm looking at is in the center field of focus, and that's just a function of depth, the image quality is great. I think image quality is paramount in selection uh, of these different devices, because in uh, me being involved with uh, ASPS and having the uh, teaching responsibilities for our yearly course, I've had to present all the different available ultrasound devices that are your competitors. I've used them all and none of them have the image quality that the Claris device has. Cloud is it's fantastic because several things I use it for. One is, and I haven't set it up in a while because it's been set up, but you can go in there and make your presets whatever you want. So you can have musculoskeletal and, and you can have a subset of eight different things that you want to name. It can be left wrist, right wrist, finger, left finger, right finger, and you just click on it and it's right there. And you can set those up from the cloud. And then I love being able to annotate the image later. Sometimes I'm in a rush and I want to take the time to put all the annotations in. I can go back on the cloud at the end of the day, bring up the patient's uh, image, annotate it, and if it's when I was writing a textbook, if I needed that image downloaded, I hit download, boom, and it's right there. It's exported and it's right into my Apple computer and it's ready to go. I have it for whatever I need it for. Um, so I use the cloud all the time.